Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I apologize that we've kind of missed a few uploads in the past week and a half, but there is some really, really exciting news coming for me personally in my real life and also some really big things that I've been working on. One of them, obviously, I've been helping Deltouche on a major tournament for Apex Legends, which is going to be this Sunday. So I've been helping him out quite a bit on that and we're coming up to the day again, which is in about three days. So let's get right into the video. So let us talk about this new game that came out and I had early access to a game called Rocket League. <laughs> Rocket League. See, everyone's doing, you know, I'm just going to leave that in there. Rocket Arena. I keep calling it Rocket League. I know everyone keeps probably saying the same thing and I'm going to make this a literally an honest review. Everybody always says honest review, but I'm going to be honest. So I got early access to this game, hence the EA Game Changers logo and make it appear right now. Um, but the biggest thing about it is that I didn't post this video right away. I actually did play the main game at launch still. I did ranked and I want to give a really big opinion, critical feedback, what surprised me about the game. And I really wanted to see how this game is going to play out with a broader audience, which is why I queued into so much rank and did a bit of testing of the waters. I went to this game and I, I can tell you just how everyone felt because I felt the same way about being uneasy. I'm just going to be real. The trailer didn't do it for me. Okay. The animation style was off-putting because it felt like a Fortnite ripoff, and that was literally my first impression. I was like, okay, let me get the bluntness out of the way here. And oh, and the fact that this game cost $30, that was a big rip. This game feels like, looks like a free-to-play game. It feels like it should be free-to-play, but I'm getting the negatives out of the way because I'm going to delve right into the video, and I'm pretty sure developers are watching this video and cringing and probably hating me for it, but I'm just going to be honest. Uh, but the biggest thing... I'm going to talk about the positive is that I generally actually like the game. I went to this capture event and I went in thinking, well, I got the day off. Let's just give this a try. And I was like, man, this game is going to be dead on arrival. And everyone, I got the wrong impression of the game, but everyone I talked to when we played it at the end of the day actually liked it. I actually liked it and it shocked me and it still does. It's a really solid game. And honestly, I, I'm kind of playing on the side. Like it's, it's such a casual, fun game. It's nice. It's like Super Smash Brothers. Um, mix with Rocket League, which is why I called it Rocket League, because they have like this other game mode and where you can uh, play, so you score score the ball essentially. So it's like Rocket League, quote unquote. I know a lot of people are probably watching this video and probably disliking because the game looks too colorful. It's got that Fortnite ripoff that I kind of mentioned, but the game has a competitive edge and it fills a gap, which was kind of surprising for me in video games. It reminds me of something from the N Nintendo 64 era, like Mario Kart. And it's just honest good fun, but it has a modern take and a competitive edge. It's got a little more depth to what it appears. Like I mentioned, it feels like Super Smash Brothers. You have this meter, and whenever it tops off, you knock people out. So very kid-friendly. It's a hard game to put into a category. Perhaps my guess is why the marketing team is struggling so much where the heck to put this into a category. It is clear this game has depth. And after playing my first round, I am just... I was just so mixed and fearful that the game lacked depth. But every time I played and I played various characters, I was able to put into categories competitively and how I felt about them. So I'm going to kind of list those out, even though you guys have no idea what I'm talking about, but I'm going to provide context and interesting, hopefully, information. So my favorite character that stepped away and what you've been seeing gameplay of was Mystine. She's A tier because she had a really strong out. She has a defensive perk um, that she can block pretty much all incoming damage. I thought that was sick. Other A tier characters are Amphora, um, probably mispronouncing that, Zell, and Blastbeard. My B list is probably Top Notch, Boone, and Jato. C would be uh, Plink and Kai. And of course, F would be Rev. I searched specifically again for characters that had a combat outmaneuver, good damage, high skill ceiling in terms of abilities, which we'll discuss later, which I thought was an interesting part of this game. Again, I mentioned that I did ranked, and it was a mixed start since you were just starting out, and it gets super sweaty as you start to play. I didn't really have any comms. Um, I'm going to play later today with a bit of a stack and see how the game feels. Again, it feels like Quake, Super Smash Brothers, and Rocket League. Honestly, a weird mix-up to even mention in that regard. You got a mode. Again, let's discuss modes. You have modes where you can play Capture the Ball, King of the Hill uh, mode called Mega Rocket, and a coin collecting mode which resembles like Super Smash Brothers and even a TDM deathmatch, like a, t a team deathmatch. I don't know why I said it that way, but here, team deathmatch. The maps are solid and felt unique in their way, and they actually sat with me. And there were places I could remember when I stepped away even. This game really lacks story, unless I didn't understand the lore, and I still don't understand the lore. But everything feels so character-driven, and I, it kind of gets me interested in it, in a way. It's super weird to say, because the characters look bland, but I generally actually feel kind of connected in a way to it. I don't I don't really know. Yeah, but 
Here, let's 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 take let's discuss the game again. The positives and negatives. Let's let's cover those. You got good frame rate, which is what I expect if I'm paying for the game. The menus are easy to navigate. You have private matches already, from what I've seen in the menus and what I was navigating after the game was released. And this is already leagues ahead of games like Battlefield, which hurts me to say. Uh, there's a test range, there's ranked and unranked, a PvE mode, which did not oppress me whatsoever. Just lack progression, kind of lost the appeal. Because the appeal is a PvP. The game is easy to learn and hard to master. That's a great concept for a game. It's a shame that I, I feel like the marketing just didn't nail it. But I was really impressed with the overall game direction and the depth that it provided. And I think that more game developers need to grasp this concept. Could you imagine if you have a great story, great character depth in terms of mechanics? So those mechanics, just to put an example, are the velocity of the bullets, damage, character taking various damage, and they're, they're outs of how you get in and out of a, of, a, of a fight. So an example. I will discuss Mystine in just a moment, but again, this feels very much like Super Smash Brothers, and I'll keep repeating that, so I apologize that I keep repeating it, but kind of want to hammer that home. I want to discuss Mystine and why I liked her so much, and it kind of puts in perspective the high skill ceiling that I believe this game does have. First off, her bullet velocity is slow, but her damage really capitalizes on being accurate, so the more follow-up shots you get, the more stacking damage you get and it gets stronger and stronger. I saw people comment they thought her damage was low and her velocity was way too difficult to predict, but it very much felt in line with me sniping and predicting movement. I feel like somebody would expect me to play character like Boone, which he's got like a sniper-esque kind of feel, but I very much like Mystine. So when characters move, they go in predictable patterns like top notch. The best ability was being in the air, but once he's not head glitching, somebody like, like that character, he was obviously way more predictable. Mystine's ultimate was way stronger than most because it was the ability to trick an opponent, kind of like Mirage and Apex, and even her alternate double would deal damage. So she had a free get out of jail free card and was able to juke people. I assume at high skill ceilings, people are going to be able to predict which one's which, but the games are pretty chaotic and so it can kind of get lost in the mix of things. Her shield provides a lot of counters to a lot of legends, so if you see an ability come your way, you just hit right click and then you start putting up a shield. Um, every legend has a dodge ability though, so if you shoot a rocket you can get a dodge or stop your the momentum of you flying off the map by pressing Q. Um, so that was pretty sick and I thought that was awesome. I was like, hey, you know, this is a good way to get over the noobs who don't understand the game very well. And I really appreciate that. I really appreciate it in the game um, in terms of the depth that means that if you actually pay attention to the mechanics, you can get better in the game. So I need more time and rank to see if this is going to scale, if this is going to be interesting, or if it just kind of stops and that's kind of it and then the game is no longer interesting. We'll see. Again, to wrap up how, how I feel about this game, it sits at a strong 8 out of 10 if I were to rate it. Granted, the things that bother me, and I'll cover them in a second again, but this is what I would give Battlefield after each installment. It's really strong, but it just needs to get flushed out. I'm more concerned with the number of modes and the fact there is not one staple in place. There is so much potential, and once it played, it really sits with you. And it's really, really good, and it hurts me immensely knowing that the first impression is so bad. But the good thing is good frame rate, the graphics are decent, it's kind of old school, but it is what it is in terms of the art style. Looks are decent for cosmetics. I mean, I dislike the fact that I have to pay for that. Um, it looks like when you level up, you can also use those points, and I got them pretty early on. The question is, if I keep playing while I keep getting these points and can I still purchase stuff? I don't know that answer yet. Seasons look like they deliver in good skins, potentially. I mean, it looks like they had some nice stuff. Good map design, it's pretty small, but it keeps the chaotic nature. It feels fast paced, great gameplay, uh, good character depth in terms of abilities. Um, the biggest thing, the game cost. This game would be way bigger if it was free to play. And the identity of the game kind of gets lost because I don't understand the story of the game. Listen, I could be a Papega and it could be my fault for not understanding, but the trailers just don't do this game justice. And it feels like it's lacking some sort of direction in that front. So I hope that people watch this review and more or less give this, like, know that this is me giving honest thoughts. I hope this gives you a direction of how you feel about the game. I hope it gives you a very first impression about Rocket Arena. I know even at the start when I called Rocket League, I'm just leaving that in there. Listen, I'm just going to leave it in there so you guys can make your own opinion about how I felt about the game. So anybody watching this from EA by chance, listen, I you know I really really enjoyed it. I I honestly did. I was I can't, I walked away really really shocked of how much fun I I actually had in the game. I haven't had that in a while from a game like this. That's kind of weird to say. It kind of feels like when I was younger when I was playing Mario Party. Mario Kart, 
but like the good versions of it before they started like just making knockoff versions of Mario Kart and just kept like pumping them out or um, Mario Party where you got Mario Party 31 and you're just like I don't even know what this game is anymore it was like the first one and I hope that based on even what I'm saying in this video that those things can kind of improve again let's see if this rocket takes off no pun intended. I appreciate everyone for watching this video. More Apex videos are coming. Maybe Rocket Arena, honestly. I kind of liked it. I'm kind of curious. We'll see what happens with it. I'm going to be honest again. I don't foresee this game taking off, but it's not going to stop me from playing it on the side. But either way, thank you again so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.